Hey guys, it's uh, C.S. Joseph with csjoseph.life and uh, today we're going to be doing season 21, episode 11. I think it's 11. So uh, how to social engineer ISTPs. Uh, I, uh, I've been waiting for this lecture for a while uh, because I like ISTPs. They're actually one of my most favorite types. Uh, they're known as the craftsman type and uh, the uh, the craftsman type, I mean, like, I'm in a hotel right now, hence like the the different uh, you know surroundings and whatnot. But um, the uh, this particular type, you know, a lot of people maintain that you can't really social engineer ISTPs, and uh, it's because you know they're very logical. Uh, they uh, they they assess things. You know, if you say anything that doesn't even make sense, they just automatically zone out. That they'll have nothing. They'll have nothing to do with you, and like all of a sudden you have no opinion, and then that's it. You know, and they're insanely stubborn, right? And it's basically because of their stubbornness. It's like, oh, why bother uh, social engineering an ISTP? Because that's like not going to help, right? Well, actually, that's not necessarily true. There's actually a lot of different uh, ways to social engineer an ISTP and why it could be like very risky. Like, you know, for example, um, uh, I was asked to get involved in a situation where uh, an ENFP, for example, actually uh, got into a company owned by an ISTP, and uh, this company was like it was like a blue collar uh, company, as you know, typically uh, ISTP companies are very blue collar, and. Uh, this ENFP somehow social engineer social engineered their way into getting equity in the company, even though it was a family owned company. And this ENFP basically slowly started taking over this company and taking control out from under the ISTP. And the ISTP basically completely allowed them to do it because for some reason ISTPs get mesmerized by ENFPs for some reason, right? And then the ENFP ended up taking control of the company, uh, much to the chagrin of the family, and it ended up turning into like a horror show. And there's not much that could have been done, right? Well. Uh, so, so, so based on that scenario, like it, it, they can be social engineered and they're social engineered just as much as everyone else. Right. Obviously there's some types that it's extremely difficult to social engineer, but again, you know, with the right pressure points and, and, you know, certain things and cues and, uh, things that could be said, et cetera, ultimately every type could break under social engineering attacks and the ISTP is no different. Right. So let's actually talk about ISTPs a little bit. So they are direct responding movement, direct being that they choose their role in the conversation, uh, they say what they mean, uh, mean what they say, uh, there isn't as much of a volume of words like I have, you know, um, you know, people who are direct though can talk like super quick, so like especially like, trip, like a triple movement type, like an INTJ, even though they are direct, they can talk like super mega fast and then people assume that they're informative when reality is they're not, right? So you guys just gotta remember direct versus informative, it, it's a little bit different, right? and uh, direct, they're like giving directives. And you know, I, I don't know how many times I've heard ISTPs being like bossed around, right? Uh, or, or, or being accused of being bossy I, is what I meant. Uh, they can be very bossy, they can be very stubborn, very set in their ways, all about what they want, all about what they think, and they don't really care about anyone else's opinion. And eventually they'll just stupid zone you and you know it's like then you don't even have any opinion anymore and they'll never listen to you ever again because from the ISTP's point of view it is they who should be listened to and nobody else hence why they are so insanely stubborn and of course good luck convincing them going into a hospital because it's like well my freedom is inhibited I don't want to be at a hospital and then they don't get the care that they need and then they die early because they're neglecting the medical system as a result because they're so afraid of having their freedom inhibited and they go to the hospital and their freedom is restricted and they absolutely hate it, right? So it takes a lot for them to actually like be in so much severe pain to finally actually be okay with actually allowing and not being so stubborn to allow them to get medical treatment, which kind of sucks, but that's just kind of how life goes, right? So based on that, uh, direct, initi or direct responding, a uh, movement, so they're very responding, which means they are introverted. Uh, ISTP spend a lot of time by themselves. Uh, they need to spend time by themselves uh, consistently. Uh, otherwise, they're just going to run out of energy, and they just want to go off and tinker. They literally tinker on everything, and everything has its place. It's because they have you know very low long-term memory, and if you move their tools, they get really upset. Uh, it needs to be put back exactly where it belongs. Otherwise, you know that's not that's not going to be a problem. They're, they can be extremely controlling, especially more immature um, ISTPs, because if they don't control people in their life, then those people are at risk of potentially uh, taking away their freedom, which is why they can be too controlling. 
I'd also like to remind the audience that ESTPs and ISTPs, but ISTPs especially, are actually the most stalker-ish of all of the types, even though ENTPs and INTJs typically, as well as ENFPs and INFJs, are typically accused of being the most stalker-ish. But I'm t here to tell you folks, ISTPs are the worst. They will do surveillance and they will surveil anyone and everyone with that SE parent. Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing, guys? What are you doing? Show me. What are you doing? What are you doing? You know, they're like literally that boss that's walking around and poking their head around the cubicle. Hey, what are you doing? Like sneaking around and whatnot. And it's like, wow, really? I mean, I, I literally had that. My ISTP boss at the hospital that I worked at deployed cameras like everywhere. And we're walking into the data center and also we get a phone call. Hey, what are you doing in the data center? And it's like, I'm doing my job. Thanks. Thanks. But for some reason, they feel the need to like literally surveil and keep control of everything lest their freedom of choice gets inhibited. It's really annoying. Thank you, ESTJ Shadow. It's like the most annoying thing in the world. But that's what they do. And, you know, gotta love them for it because they really create these amazing things. They have awesome abilities like running an excavator, tinkering, tinkering through anything. And I've learned a lot of, about life from ISTPs and I'm very thankful for them because their ENFJ uh, subconscious can mentor me. And they mentor me and they make me into a stronger human being, a stronger man. It is absolutely incredible uh, what wisdom that they're able to confer on multiple people. Uh, that's why like ISTPs, if they have no direction in life, I tell them you need to become a teacher. And like, well, I don't want to just become a school teacher. And I'm like, no, then maybe you should become like a shop teacher or a metal shop or a wood shop or at least or, or get involved with Future Farmers of America or something and just seriously, like get, uh, go out there and teach your skills to other people. Well, I don't have any skills. Well, guess what? You have TI Hero. You know what that means? If you go out to other people and if you're helping people, you will automatically, because you have TI Hero, quickly gain a new skill and then teach them that skill and then learn more about that skill because you're teaching it because no type learns faster from teaching than an ISTP. No type is able to become more intelligent faster than a TI hero with Effie Inferior. If they are focused on helping others, they become smarter than everybody else. That's literally TI hero. That's literally what ISTPs and INTPs, but what ISTPs do. So just always keep that in mind, folks. It's very important. It's very, very important to keep that in mind, right? So anyway, uh, 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 so they're, all, they're also very movement. So they're not really outcome focused like uh, ESTPs are. They're very, uh, they're very um, um, movement oriented. Uh, so they, they do things quickly. Uh, they don't do things slowly. Uh, they can think on their feet extremely quick. But the other thing is, is that they have this master process that they apply to everything. So developing an individual process for every outcome that they want. That's why ESTPs are insecure with what they want. They're not really sure what they want because then they're like, well, now I have to develop a, a process for every little thing that I'm trying to do. Whereas the ISTP doesn't have that issue. They just know what they want. And they have this master process that they think it's like this one size fits all solution. But that's also why ISTPs consistently get the moniker jack of all trades, master of none, right? And that is the true jack of all trades, master of none type. It is the ISTP. Now. INTJs though, not the case. INTJs are jack of all trades, masters of all. That is the type that can master any skill, uh, provided that they have enough time to focus on that skill. But if they stop using that skill, they lose the skill, right? So it's a little bit different. Whereas the ISTP keeps all those skills, but they're not really focusing on mastery because NI child is just like, ooh, I, ooh squirrel, or ooh, ooh, shiny, you know? And, that, and they just kind of go in that direction, right? Whereas the INTJ, they can actually focus. And through focus, then they're able to actually like go in that direction. You know what I'm saying? So just, just keep that in mind. Um, so their interaction style, direct responding movement, uh, which makes them a finisher, they're always focused on finishing things. Uh, their temperament is the artisan, which is a, a freedom-based creator staying in the moment at all times. They only live in the moment. Uh, they have not very good long-term memory. They're like, they're like, I have an amazing memory because my short-term memory is so good. That's what they really mean by that. But do they have long-term memory? No. And then they swear they have the best long-term memory. I have a memory of an elephant, my former ISTB boss told me. And we could only just chuckle and make fun of him behind his back because he like had no clue that how forgetful he was. It got to one point where we started recording in a journal everything that he ever said and everything we ever told him basically dated and time stamped. And anytime he said that, uh, you know, he doesn't remember that, we just throw it in his face, you know? And it's like, okay, yeah, see, we actually told you that. Oh, wait, this is like, oh, more proof that your memory is not that good, even though you think it is. Like, seriously, stop. 
ISTP, stop. It's annoying. Stop it. You're not that. You don't remember. You don't have that good of memory. Sorry. You have great short-term memory, and that's awesome. But your long-term memory, well, it sucks. Sorry. Admit it. Like, seriously, admit it. Like, move on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Anyway. So, yeah. Uh, the temperament, uh, they're very concrete, very matter-of-fact, very in the moment. They're not going to put up with anything abstract. Abstract is not even real. What are we doing right now, guys? Like, no. We don't care about that. They're only they're very interest based. There's like, okay, well, what's in it for you? Well, what's in it for me? Very interest at all times. <coughs> and uh, the other thing is, um, they are very. Uh, let's see here. They're, so, uh, um, systematic versus interest. Their interest. Oh yeah, they're very pragmatic. So they're extremely independent. This is why ISTPs actually have a very hard time asking for help. Good luck, because from their point of view, everyone should be listening to me because I'm obviously the smartest guy in the room, duh. And then as a result of that, I get to help everyone because I'm the smartest guy in the room. So if I'm the smartest guy in the room and I need help, what does that say about me? Oh, that means like I'm useless, I'm worthless, I'm not actually that smart apparently, even though I know I'm the smartest guy in the room, but it doesn't look like that if I'm asking other people for help. So then they don't, why? Because of their personal pride. And an ISTP is willing to sacrifice anything for the sake of their pride. Because that TI hero pride. Oh, it's so annoying. I wish they'd like actually like, you know, humble themselves for once. That would be nice. Oh, and you know what? I enjoy humbling ISTPs, especially publicly. Oh, it's so enjoyable. You should try it sometime. So, uh, but yeah, that's the uh, temperament, the artisan temperament for the ISTP. Let's get down to business. So, got my uh, trusty whiteboard. It's uh, back for this particular episode. Uh, so we have the uh, the ISTP uh, ego, we have the uh, uh, unconscious, and we have the subconscious right here, and the uh, superego here. So ISTP ego, ESTJ uh, unconscious, and ENFJ uh, subconscious with INFP uh, superego. Pretty fantastic. Uh, and uh, for the sake of this lecture, we're going to be emulating ESTJ. ESTJ is highest compatibility with the ISTP and an ESTJ uh, an emulated ESTJ could successfully social engineer an ISTP and basically doing anything that the emulated ESTJ would need to do. Pretty awesome. It's like uh, literally how to guide the mind of that ISTP, if you know what I'm saying, right? And then that mind will start processing things in a different direction because the TE of the ESTJ is able to provide the input such that it changes the direction of the ISTP. What's a great example of this? Now, let us refer back to that amazing film known as the My Big Fat Greek Wedding. And the mother of the woman in the film, the woman main character who was this uh, daughter of theirs who was like not married yet, and apparently it was like this whole thing or whatever, and it was like not appropriate. Yeah, pretty sucked, I get it, right? So what do you do, right? Well, the mother explained to the daughter that, you know, the man is the head of the house, and the head of the house they make the decisions, but we are the women of the house, and the women turn the neck of the men, right? That's literally what is going on here. This is how an ESTJ, emulated ESTJ, social engineers, and ISTP, because they're so stubborn. So all they do is just turn the neck of the ISTP, and the ISTP with their little any tricks, is like, oh, wow, this is like literally Providence this entire time. This is, I just got so lucky. I'm so lucky. And then all of a sudden that emulated ESTJ is like chuckling to themselves. Yeah, whatever, bro. Like, I just completely changed your mind about that. I just completely guided you down a path. And you thought like for one second that it was all you or it was some Providence or some like lucky thing when in reality I orchestrated the entire thing. Whatever. Whatever. Like, sorry, ESTJs are also known as the orchestrators. And there's like a reason for that. They can orchestrate stuff. And the ISTP like has no idea. It's so easy to deploy a Xanatos Gambit against the ISTP. Never forget that, right? Of course, the social engineering technique known as the Xanatos Gambit is what you deploy best against NI heroes. But let me tell you something. NI child was especially weak to it. Oh, yeah. Because that little kid just like, oh, I just want all these things. And oh, look at all these choices you're giving me. Oh, this is so amazing. Look at all these choices, and then all of a sudden, like literally every choice ends up in your favor because you know you orchestrated it that way. Good times, good times. So, emulated ESTJ. So let's talk about a a, a specific a scenario uh, as to how an emulated ESTJ. Yes, I'm not going to hold the whiteboard up for like 45 minutes like I usually do. Trust me, um, I'm. Uh, it's a little late right now as I'm filming this, so. 
probably not going to do that right now. But uh, actually, I'm not. Uh, but so anyway, so let's talk about like scenarios. What are some scenarios with which we can utilize for, uh, uh, you know, emulating an ISTP? So let's see. I could pull out some scenarios from my past. I could pull out scenarios uh, for other people. Um, but yeah, so emulated ESTJ. So ESTJ, emulated ESTJ, they show up. They're dressed properly with that SE critic, you know, very uh, prompt, uh, on time, uh, very punctual, wearing a suit, looking real nice, you know what I'm saying? Uh, shoes are tied, hair is done, got the cologne going, uh, you know, uh, appropriate uh, expensive glasses, uh, probably a, a gold watch of some kind, and, and really, really looking as classy as hell. That's what it's all about. Emulated ESTJ is all about a person who has class, and the ISTP secretly wishes they had class, and that's basically all they do. He who has class is he who is important. And if this guy is important, he's obviously smart. And he may be as smart as me. And I'm going to listen to him, right? And that's that's just kind of it. Like, like, I'm sorry, ISTPs. You folks are, like, insanely shallow, even though you don't even admit how shallow you are. But you guys are really shallow. It's, like, it's bad. <laughs> but you guys are shallow. Sorry. You are. I mean, it's a fact. So, uh given how shallow the ISTP is, that uh, that ESTJ can definitely match the shallowness of the ISTP. I mean, that's why, you know, ISTPs and ESTJs, they, they predominantly actually meet in the gym. They, they just do. Like, that's like a normal thing for them, for their relationship. Yeah, you want to find ESTJs and ISTPs? Go to the gym. Like, you want to get in a relationship with them? Go to the gym. Like, seriously, that's like the number one place to find these people is on the gym or on a hiking trail or skydiving or something like that. That's where you find these people. Uh, so, uh so the ESTJ comes in and uh, let's just say it's like they're trying to get something out of the ISTP. Like, what is it? You know, maybe it's like equity in a company. Maybe it's to take their ideas, et cetera. Maybe they're working on some new technology of some kind. And the ESTJ, the emulated ESTJ is trying to get that information. Or maybe this person is trying to convince the ISTP that they need to get medical care, even though they have no freedom in the hospital to get the ISTP to be willing to like get freedom and whatnot. Yeah, it's pretty rough. Uh, you know, there's so many different possible scenarios that we could do, but let's, uh, uh, let's, let's, let's take it, let's take it, let's take it to the social. Let's look at it from a social, let's use a social, uh, scenario, right? So when you have an ISTP boss, right? It is, it's pretty hard. It's pretty hard working under an ISTP boss because it's like, it's their way or the highway. Absolutely. Their way or the highway. If you do not do it exactly their way of doing things, then they get pretty upset. You know, and, and, and if you consistently are like, no, I can't do it like that, or no, I do that, and you know, blah, blah, blah. But then they also like trying to force you to do things their way because they're trying to teach you a lesson because they think that you need to be taught a lesson. And then they expect you to be happy that you learned a lesson and you're stronger than them, even though you're like deep down, you're like, dude, you don't even know what you're talking about. You think you know, but you actually don't know what you're talking about. And I'm just going to tolerate you and pretend that I'm so grateful for receiving a lesson from you. When in reality, it's like, you know, I already thought about that like two weeks ago and actually already implemented a fix or whatever. You see what I'm saying? Like, like that, that, that sucks. Like that, that really sucks. But, um, you know, however, like, you know, like my, my ISTP boss that I had, like the hospital, he was like, he's a good man and he was excellent in what he did. He's like one of the best engineers I've ever met and he is brilliant. He is very brilliant. He'd never say he's brilliant because that's the thing about ISTPs. They are brilliant, but they never claim they're brilliant because they're literally walking Dunning-Kruger syndrome. Dunning-Kruger syndrome basically means the smart people think they're stupid and the stupid people think they're smart right? And it's really annoying. And ISTPs are walking around with Dunning-Kruger syndrome. They never believe they're intelligent. They never could even consider that they're a genius. And that's why they have to end up reading books like Expert Secrets by Russell Brunson. They can finally give themselves uh, like uh, uh, permission to actually be intelligent. And it's just like, huh, that would be nice because some guy's like, hey, by the way, just so you guys know, like people need to like actually start labeling themselves and electing themselves experts because then all of a sudden the world will start turning and things will actually start changing and happening for once. But the ISVP would never do that because their TE nemesis is like, well, I don't have formal training and I don't have, you know, credentials. So how could I be considered an expert by other people? And I'm worried about that. So there's no way I could think that's true. So I'm never going to label myself an expert. And I'm never going to give myself permission to be entrepreneurial or anything like that because no one would obviously listen to me because I don't have the credentials to back it up. And then they don't even try. Oh my gosh, it's like so annoying. ISTPs, you're freaking brilliant. Just wake up. 
Like seriously, allow yourself to be considered an expert for once. No, but that would be prideful. Yet you're stupidly prideful with your TI hero that you won't even listen to anyone because you expect everyone to listen to yourselves. And yet you're so self-deprecating that you can't even get over your own crap. It's so annoying. You hypocrites. Stop. Please stop. You're brilliant. Help us. Instead of being hypocrites about it. Like, give yourselves more credit. Oh, wait, you can't because you're so worried about how much credit you're actually going to have. Like, who cares? Who cares about your credibility? Just tell the truth. That's all you got to do, ISTPs. Who cares about your credibility? I mean, I don't care about your credibility. You think I care about mine? You see what I'm saying? You know, like, most people realize I kind of don't. But, I mean, I mean, I kind of do, but it's T credit because I have to wisely, like, care about my credibility. But at the same time, like, if the credibility is in the way of me telling the truth, I'm willing to throw the credibility out of the, out of the window to tell the truth. Well, guess what, ISTPs? So should you. Oh, I always am willing to do that. Yeah, but then again, you won't allow yourselves to grow because of your, like, lack of formal training or credentials. Stop being hypocrites, guys. Seriously. Be consistent for once. Because, you know, you expect everyone else to be consistent, but you yourselves aren't consistent. Weird. Have you ever noticed that, ISTPs? Ooh, hashtag more hypocrisy. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Sorry, guys. I just kind of have to give you a lot of crap tonight because a lot of my other videos, you know, everyone's like, oh, C.S. Joseph, he's always against the NFPs all the time. Well, I mean, come on. It's your turn tonight, ISTPs. Sorry. Not sorry. With that being said. So social engineering and ISTP, right? How do you do it? How, how do you go out doing it? Like, what scenario are we going to use, right? So... My grandfather, my grandfather was an ISTP and uh, he valued his freedom. Uh, he used to um, he used to work for the government uh, out of a place known as Langley uh, in um, in uh, on the East Coast. And uh, he worked in Langley and uh, he'd uh, he'd go off um, on trips around the world and whatnot. Uh, and uh, and as a result of his work in Langley and then one time he went on one of his trips then they came back, and then he didn't want to work in Langley anymore, and then he just up and quit immediately, and then moved his family across the country to Washington State, and uh, out in Seattle and whatnot, and then he got himself some land somewhere, and he did what every ISTP does, and they have 20 acres of land, or it's actually 15 acres of land, uh, they just build it up and have fun, and it's like literally their giant playground, and got himself an, um, a dozer, and some various other equipment out there, and he built his own house uh, because what ISTP doesn't build their own house? And of course, like all of the uh, SJ women of the world are like, I want a man that could build me a house. You know what I'm saying? With his own bare hands, you know? And then the, of course, like, you know, the ISTP will like rise to the occasion and they never live in, an, in a house that another man built because their TE and nemesis is like, I don't think I could trust anyone else to actually know how to do it properly, much less have any good moral sensibilities about how to actually build a house properly. So, you know, if you want it done right, do it yourself. That's like literally like the main motto of the ISTP because they never trust anyone else to do anything and they constantly interrupt people before they fail just to fix it for them only to alienate that person and that person will like never be loyal to them while the ISTP expects that person to be loyal to them and then again more hypocrisy oh yeah we're on a hypocrisy kick tonight aren't we folks but uh anyway be that as it may my grandfather he built his own house he had his own uh, acreage out there it, it, it's it's an amazing place actually um I might actually film a, a lecture or two out there. I, I I think it's I think it's great and very uh, happy you know to have that uh, the opportunity um, you know out there for my family and whatnot and what he built it, it is an amazing place. But um, anyway, he uh, he eventually contracted prostate cancer, uh, this ISTP, and that that really sucks. Uh, and uh, he allowed his prostate cancer to just you know go unchallenged for for many 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 years because. From his point of view, if he'd go to the doctors, yeah, it would force him to like give up his freedom, and he didn't want to have to give up his freedom. He didn't want to have to go to the hospital. He didn't want to have to get all of these. Uh, his anti child was like, "No, I don't want to do these things. No, no." And it's like the stubbornness, the stubborn of "I don't want this. This is gonna take my freedom away. I'm not gonna do this." So he consistently continued and lived with prostate cancer, and it just kept on growing and growing and growing and growing until finally it eventually claimed his life. You know, which really sucks. And uh, I mean, he was at risk of having his his foot amputated at one point in time, right? It, it's just uh, it, it's just situations like that, you know, that that really uh, can mess things up. You know, you know, for an ISTP because they're they're all about they're all about freedom. 
they're consistently about freedom. And, uh, you know, if you take that freedom away, they just shut down. They can't even do anything about it. So they, they go out of their way to, like, literally control everything to keep with their ESTJ shadow to keep that freedom, right? Well, okay, fair enough. So in this scenario, we had to social engineer him into being okay with going to the hospital, right? Uh, to be going okay, to being okay with, uh, you know, uh, getting, uh, you know, getting a, um, you know, his prostate checked and, and getting him stable and whatnot, because we'd be concerned that he'd like, you know, die and whatnot from this cancer. Uh, but we finally was able to take him there and, uh, you know, and convince him to do that, you know, through, you know, emulating his TJ, for example, and, and, and then allowing, you know, the doctors to give him advice that would potentially, you know, assist him with uh, getting better treatment and extending his life. It was really, really difficult to do so, right? So anyway, uh, and there, there's a lot of different ways to go about doing it. So he, uh, you know, from, so like, so example, like emulated ESTJ coming in to convince an ISTP, ISTP that they need to go to a hospital, right? To get help or else they will not be alive for much longer. A consistent issue with ISTPs, especially ISTP men everywhere, right? Now with women, it's different because like if they're married to somebody, you know, they'd be like their, their husband or whatever could just tell them, you know, hey, you're, I feel really bad. I don't value this. And then they're more likely to go to the hospital as a result because they can be guilted and go in the hospital pretty easily. But ISTP men, it's a lot harder. They're a lot more hard headed than the women, et cetera, because the women still represent the yin as they're like very pliable and whatnot. Whereas the masculine energy of the ISTP is very yang, very firm. Good luck convincing them because they're like super mega uh, stubborn and whatnot. Like good luck, like good luck right good luck right right emulated estj right so anyway uh convincing him to go to the hospital and then actually convincing him to listen listen to a doctor good luck convincing an istp to listen to anything because again from their point of view everyone should be listening to them because they're like quote the smartest person in the room right right that's where they get their stubbornness right super mega stubborn so, uh, so the so you have the ISTP, uh, the ESTJ shows up. They got the SE critic. You know, I'm looking good thing. They got that. I'm a very moral person. I'm a good person. I go to church every Sunday. I'm very punctual. Uh, you know, I'm all about giving everyone else freedom. Hey, what do you want, man? I'll let you do whatever you want. You always have a choice with me. No problem. I'm very dutiful. I'll always be loyal to you all the time. But uh, you know, hey, you should probably think about these things because I have these evidence and reference points and and that point to the contrary, so that you can't be thinking this because. All these people have said otherwise you know what i'm saying and uh you know it, providing that research and that evidence and then providing choices and options to the istp right and that's the only way to get them to essentially capitulate and stop being stubborn and actually seek the help that they need because you know god forbid an istp let go of their pride and allow someone else to actually like help them god forbid right right <laughs> so yeah so that's, that's an issue right so what do you do? Remember, when you're social engineering someone, you have to target their their primary functions, their their hero and their child. Because if you get their hero and child on the side, then their pessimistic functions, which is the parent and the inferior functions, will start agreeing with you. This is what we call ego hacking, aka social engineering, aka manipulation. You need to go after those functions. Why is that? Well, because if we're looking at our board right here, you know. Uh, the hero function, which is TI hero for the ISTP, is connected on an axis with the inferior function. These two functions are linked. So what happens to one happens to the other. The same thing with the parent and the child. The parent is always linked to the child at all times. So what happens to one happens to the other. Now the parent function is pessimistic and it's very skeptical. So it's always like, okay, what are you up to? What's your angle? What are you doing right now? I need to know. I need to surveil you. I need to like get some surveillance going here. The ISTP is trying to figure it out. Like it's always surveying the environment. I need to survey you right now. Are you been surveyed? I need to survey you, right? It's no wonder ISTPs make good uh, land uh, land surveyors, by the way. That's like a really uh, th that's a thing that they do because they're very amazing at surveying anything and manipulating the physical environment and manipulating land around there with their SE SE parent. The SE parent, like, they're not going to be able to understand, you know. And what's really great about ISTPs, what really makes them open to social engineering, extrovert intuition, trickster, because they're just so unaware of other people's intentions. They think they're so good at sniffing out other people's intentions, and they're so bad at it. They're so bad. You can so easily put one over on ISTP, and they have no idea you're even doing it. They have no clue. No clue. 
because they're not aware of other people's intentions. And other people's hidden intentions consistently bites them in the butt over and over and over. How else is that ENF be able to take over that ISTP's family business and take it out from under him? <coughs> Excuse me. So, so based on that, what do you want to do when you're social engineering an ISTP, especially when you're trying to convince them to go get help to actually like help themselves for one and like talk to a doctor about the fact that they have prostate cancer or whatever and actually go to a hospital and actually seek treatment, well, you have to do some things. And that is you need to target the hero function and the child function because if you get them on their side, you can treat them well, the pessimistic functions will follow suit because if the SE parent doesn't catch you, well, they're being very skeptical about you and what you're doing and how you look, you know, because it can be really shallow like that. You have to get past that shallowness check. You got to get past that loyalty check of the SE parent. That's going to be a problem. And, you know, if you don't if you don't do it right, well, then that loyalty check is a thing. Because here's the thing. An ISTP, if you give them freedom to do whatever they want, they don't care how loyal you are. They don't care how loyal you are to them because you're giving them full freedom to do whatever they want. So loyalty is not a thing. They don't have to worry about security. I can just do whatever I want. And you're okay with it. So you don't necessarily have to be loyal to me because I have full choice anyway. So who cares? But when they have to sacrifice their freedom of choice, the people around them in their life better be loyal to them for them to be willing to sacrifice that choice. Oh, so that's why ISTP men rarely, if ever, commit to their women and they have to be ultimatumed into doing it consistently. Otherwise, they remain usually statistically by majority, especially in this day and age, they stay man children for so long such that they like get into serious relationships with women and then don't commit to them after five years disparaging those women and make and like completely wasting those women time over and over and over wow thank you istps because when there's like well i need to try all the women out there and i need to see what i like but the thing is they just don't even really remember that those experiences that much because they're just constantly seeking the next experience and the next experience and the next experience and the next woman and the next woman and the next woman and the next woman they don't even know what they want because it's like, I want more and I want more and I want more and I want more. And it's all about quantity over quality with these people. And like, that doesn't even help remotely. Like seriously, guys, not cool. Like that is like not cool. So anyway, based on that, just, just, just something to be aware of. Like, uh, if they, you know, you better be loyal to them if their freedom of choice is being inhibited. And that's one of the reasons why they have such a hard time committing uh, you know icp men have a hard time committing to their women and they have to be ultimatum into it like uh every single icp i know of when they're like committing to their sj woman the sj woman's like i've been loyal to you this entire time i've given you so freedom of choice and i've done all these things for you and you still won't commit to me really you have a choice i will not be loyal to you anymore and i will move on from you right now or you give me a ring and now all of a sudden that's why that's why guys Men, for some reason, think it's okay to take their women with them to go choose their ring at the jeweler. How about, men, how about you have your own ring that you design yourself and represents you and is your signet ring as part of your kingdom and you present it to your woman instead of, like, necessarily taking her to the jewelry shop herself and letting her choose? Oh, wait, yeah, you do it because you probably, I don't know, and I'm generalizing here, by the way, so I, and I know I'm generalizing on this statement, but is it, is it, is it possible? Let me ask the question. Is it possible that you're having commitment issues to begin with and uh, you taking her to uh, the jewelry store is a symbol of your commitment because you you don't want it demonstrated to her your lack of commitment because wait your si critic finally kicked in and you're actually showing loyalty for once hmm i wonder i wonder if that's what's happening maybe maybe i'm not going to say if it is or not maybe <coughs> so social engineering remember the child versus the parent very 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 important you want to go for the child make the child happy the parent will leave you alone uh, watch out for the inferior function. The inferior function is where a person's fear exists and they have social anxiety. So, you know, the ISTP would be afraid that, you know, maybe their social status or anything social related or someone may actually be harmed as a result of taking actions from the emulated ESTJ. And then as a result of that, they would be more, they'd be hard pressed or interested in like potentially like not getting involved in that. So that would be an issue. Um, so, uh, so yeah, ba based on that, just, uh, just something to be aware of. So, and then also you have the, the you have their nemesis function, don't, because that, that TE nemesis, that could like, like stupid zone you, and then you have like no credibility whatsoever, and they won't even listen to you. And then their SI critic, like critically is aware of their own loyalty, and, and whether or not they have to be loyal to you at all, 
or even obligated because you have to be careful with SI credit because if you obligate an ISTP or over obligate them, they're just going to be pissed. Like it's not going to help. It's not going to really do anything. It's not something I would recommend, right? Because like I say that all the time. So yeah, don't do that. And then obviously there are any trickster can be easily taken advantage of because they're just so unaware of other people's intentions and avoid their FI demon because they really don't care how they feel. It's all about how other people feel. But guess what? You can easily guilt them into like doing anything. So yeah, just be careful because guilt is a powerful weapon against the ISTP. And if you have to go there, you can, but you shouldn't have to if you're focusing on their hero and their child functions. So TI hero, it's like you come in with the ESTJ and it's like, hey, have you considered X? Have you considered Y? Have you considered Z? Have you considered all of these things? Have you thought about this? The emulated ESTJ is pr uh, providing this to the ISTP. Then the ISTP starts processing these things. Have you thought about these statistics? Have you thought about um, these reference points, right? For the social engineering tech. Have you thought about this research before? Ooh, look at that flashy research. Ooh, there's a nice interesting label. Ooh, Johns Hopkins University, right? So, you know, or ooh, or, uh, or you know, Swedish, et cetera, right? So like, it, who knows? Like how, you know, ooh, credentials, you know, it's like, these people are important, you know, squirrel, right? <laughs> of the ISTP, you know, of course, you know, their TE nemesis is like, well, I don't think I should have to believe these people anyway, because I'm smarter than them, obviously. I've been doing this for so many years, I should be fine tomorrow. It's like, it's not like I'm gonna die tomorrow as I critic. Like, I'm okay, I can get through to this. I've always gotten through this, and then come to find out they just make it worse and worse and worse and worse, and then all of a sudden their foot is amputated and they don't even know, right? Like, that can be a thing. So you have to like, okay, I got to convince this ISTP to get medical help now because I know that they're going to get screwed if they don't. And then it's going to be even more miserable after the fact. And they're going to be even more stubborn, right? And they're going to be prideful about it. That's even worse. And it's annoying, right? You can't do that. You like literally can't do that. And it's like, it's like terrible. So what do you do? What do you do? What do you do? So hero function, ask them what they think. By, and provided them with new things to think. Provide them, like when you're making the argument for them, they should probably go get their health checked, make the argument, be like, hey, you need to think about these things. Here's the research. Here's what the symptoms look like. And all of these sources, these like five or six different sources, you got WebMD, you got PubMed, uh, you have like all these different sources on the internet. Here's the symptoms list for what's happening to you. All of them match, you know. And then they, you've been complaining about it earlier today. I remember you saying that, et cetera. Look at all of these things here. You need to think about this so you can make this decision, right? The ISTP starts processing that information and is like, okay, all right, yeah, you have a point. Okay, yeah, I should kind of listen to you because all these people agree with you right now. All of these reference points agree with you because you got to provide them reference points. Reference points are everything. So just, just be aware of, um, you know, just be aware of that issue, right? So, uh, and then, you know, okay, you want to go after the child function and be like, hey, you know, but you have the choice, you know, you can go to this hospital, you can go to this doctor, you can go over here, you can go over there, uh, we could probably get someone on the phone with you, and you just keep presenting them choices and keep and you know, just remember chaos is a ladder. So you prevent them a choice. So like, they'll probably pick the low hanging fruit. Okay, yeah, fine. We'll talk on the nurse on the phone. I don't want to commit to going to the hospital now. But like, thank you for giving the choice to at least talk to the nurse and then they talk to the nurse. And the nurse is like, well, you should probably go to the hospital. I don't want to go to the hospital then. So you just keep moving the goalpost. And that's what ES emulated ESTJ does to the ISTP. You just keep moving that goalpost for their NI child. And it's like, okay, yeah, NI child, here, you have all these choices. And then they'll obviously pick the lowest hanging fruit, easy choice first, because that's what they do. NI child, ew, little kid, easiest choice first, immature child, yay. And then they pick that choice. So then you present them with new choices. And then they present them new choices and then new ones and then new ones and then new ones until finally you've guided them to the point where they realize that the only choice left is to go to the hospital because if they don't they're gonna lose their foot right and well welcome to the xanatos gambit the xanatos gambit is how you defeat introverted intuition you want to defeat introverted intuition you provide them with choices that benefit you in the end or a series of choices that gets them to the next set of choices, where all those choices will get them to the next set of choices, and all those choices will get to the next set of choices, and that's the final set of choices where all those choices end up with them in the hospital getting help so that their foot is not amputated, right? 
those kinds of things, you know, like because like we're trying to avoid getting gangrene right now. You know what I'm saying? Which can happen when you're diabetic and have prostate cancer at the same time. Not good, right? So, uh, you know, that's that's basically what you have to do. Because I mean, if you don't do it that way, that SC parent cycle, you know, what are you doing? You're trying to manipulate me or whatever. You know, what's your interest here? Like, what do you what do you gain out of this? Like, are you trying to invade my freedom right now? Like, what are you doing? Uh, you know, how is this going to give anyone a good experience? And then, you know, but of course, you know, the emulated ESTJ is like, well, I'm not getting a good experience like this. I mean, do you really want, they're going to they literally say, do you want NI child? Do you want me to have to suffer taking care of you when you don't have your foot because your foot is amputated? Do you want to be in a wheelchair? Do you want to be a burden? Ooh, I love saying that to ISTPs. Do you want to be a burden on your family? Oh, yeah. Ugh. I love that. It's a nice punch in the face when you do that to them because then you're like guilting them at the same time as you're hitting their parent function. Oh, it's so nice. Please do that. Please, like every ISTP in your life, ask them all the time if they want to be a burden. Oh, I love that. Oh, it's so good. It also works really well on ESTPs and NFJs. That whole quadra, ask them if they want to be a burden. Just hit them in the head with it. You can like manipulate them into like almost anything doing that to them over and over and over again. It's so fun. It's a great toy. I recommend it, right? <laughs> yeah, seriously, like don't manipulate people. Oh, wait. All social interaction is manipulation. So, like, get over it. I mean, come on, guys. This is the human race we're talking about. So, anyway. You know, and then you, and then the emulated ESTJ is like, well, I don't feel good about this. I don't feel good about you not wanting to go to the hospital right now because then you're going to be a burden on your family. Oh, you can take it in the negative area. So, they start off positively. They start off positively, hitting those optimistic functions. Like, hey, look at the research. Here's what the symptoms say. You know, here I found all these things. Here's your choices for you, NI child. This is the Xanatos gambit, but you don't even know because you have any trickster and your extra intuition trickster has no clue as to what's going on. And based on that, it's like, well, I guess you have no choice but to choose to go to the hospital. But even then, they could still be stubborn. And at that point, it's like, okay, time to take it to the emotional level and just be like, hey... I don't feel good about how you expect, how you are going to become a burden on me after your foot is amputated, okay? And I've been loyal to you this entire time with my with my emulated SI parent, and I've been doing the good thing by you and taking care of you because of my FI inferior, and I've been doing these good for you, and I've been loyal to you, and you're just going to increase my burden already? Really? You're really going to do that? You're going to increase your burden? Wow. I don't feel good about that. How can I be loyal to someone like that, right? And then the ISTP just like crumbles. And then they feel guilty and they're like, oh, I can't be a burden. I have to stay useful. I have to stay helpful. And I'm obviously not helping anyone if I don't have my foot anymore. Yes, I want to go to the hospital to save my foot. Huh. Huh. Interesting how that works, right? You know, and you've already presented your references as emulated ESTJ, references with that emulated TE hero. And then the uh, ISTP is like, well, yeah. Uh, I can't stupid zone you because all of your research checks out. See, that's the thing about emulated ESTJ, guys. Your research better check out because that TI hero will expose a weakness. And if it exposes just one flaw in your research, it will stop listening to you. And your that TE nemesis has just stupid zoned you. And you may as well just stop talking entirely. And your social engineering attack just failed. Don't do it. Like, literally, don't do that. It's like a, it's like a total waste. Like, don't do that. Because if your research is not absolutely perfect... They will find a flaw and then you have no credibility with them and you'll have to find a third party to help social engineer them because then you're screwed. Or you might have to get a group of people together to get in front of them and go after that effie inferior and be like, you're burdening all of us. You're and then guilt them, guilt them, guilt them, and guilt that effie inferior until finally they're so emotionally upset that they finally agree begrudgingly to go to the hospital to save their foot, right? Be careful, like seriously, be aware of that. So let's look at the cognitive functions one more time. So remember, when social engineering and ISTP, what do you got to do? Make sure your references with emulated ESTJ are perfect. Your research, your references, you better have a really good argument that is backed up by credentialed, important looking human beings. Because that's what ENFPs do to get over, uh, you know, put something over on an ISTP is they look important. They look smart. ENFPs look smart, whether or not they're actually smart. I mean, that's kind of subjective when you're talking about TI trickster in that regard, but they look smart. And because they look smart, the ISTP's like, wow, that guy looks so professional. He looks so slick. He looks so clean. He looks so awesomely clean, cut, and all these things. I should listen to him. 
He knows what he's talking about. He's obviously an expert. When in reality, he's a snake in the grass. You don't even know. And of course, any trickster can't even tell because it's a snake in grass. I don't understand the intentions of other people, right? But they just get so stubborn, right? So you better make sure your research is perfect. And then you make sure you demonstrate loyalty and you, you know, and you have to show loyalty and consistency to that SE parent, you know, and then also you have to give choices to NI child, NE child to NI child, give them choices, use a Xanatos gambit to lead that child through choices to the direction you want him to go. You can lead a horse to water. How are you going to lead this horse to water? By giving this horse choices. It's just that this horse, whatever choice it takes, willfully ends up where you want it to go. That's the power of extrovert intuition over NI. Extrovert intuition can lead NI to any direction. You know, and I can break out of the Xanatos Gambit, sure, but then you just provide a new set of choices and you just keep going and just keep going. And guess what? Eventually, the extrovert intuitive will win in the end because introverted sensing can outlast introverted intuition, right? So be aware of that. And then obviously, you know, you know, I feel bad because you're being a burden on me and you're making things worse for me, you know, SE parent, FE inferior, and then you just guilt them. You can guilt the ISTP into doing anything. Guilt, 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 guilt. If all else fails, just guilt them a lot and bring a lot of people and have multiple people guilt them over and over and over again until finally they capitulate. And then you can, and if you need to, and if you're trying to get them through the Xanatos Gambit all the way to the end, well, guess what? You can use a combination of guilt and choices to finally get them to where they need to go. You can really guide that ISTP into doing anything you want. I'm sorry, they're really weak to these kinds of attacks, these kinds of social engineering, and they don't even know it. It's like really sad and really like, I mean, come on, it's any trickster. They have no idea what other people's intentions are, right? And, you know, and make sure your research is good. Make sure it's factual because if it's not, you're going to get stupid zoned by that TE inferior and you better make sure that you're clean cut, you're professional looking because if they find any visual flaws because of how shallow the ISTP is, that SI critics would be like, nope, no way I'll ever let myself be loyal to you. There's no way I'm ever going to trust you. There's no way that you're going to give me a good experience because you're not giving me a good experience now. So why are you credible? They're not going to have anything. And they're just going to try to control you. Like, I'm going to control the situation because you're going to inhibit my freedom because that NI child is all about freedom. It needs freedom. NI child needs freedom. And without freedom, it ain't going nowhere. Any trickster you don't have to worry about because they're not aware of your dark intentions towards them anyway, so it doesn't matter. And then it's all about, make it all about what you feel. Do not make it about how they feel. Asking an ISTP who needs to go to the hospital how they feel, you've just failed your social engineering attack. Never ask an ISTP how they feel. Be like, tell them how you feel and how you feel bad because they're in their situation. Because they are having cancer at that point in time. It's not about how they feel just talk about the facts and about how you feel and then they'll be engaged folks this is what you do don't forget you have to win the hero and the child in order to get the pessimistic functions the parent and the inferior to go along with it that's literally how this works folks you want a social engineer and ISTP? This is what you have to do. This is the behaviors you have to exhibit in order to put one over on them. Even if it's for their own benefit. Because I guarantee you, there's millions of families out there who are trying to get their ISTP dads or their ISTP fathers or their ISTP brothers or ISTP uncles into the hospital. Good luck. If they only had these techniques, they probably would have saved more lives. Oh, but no, social engineering is evil. Let me tell you, folks, this is an example where the ends justify the means. And I don't care what you idealists say out there about how you don't like how the ends justify the means. But sometimes, folks, if it's going to save lives, maybe a little social engineering, a little manipulation can go a long way. Think about it, folks. Besides, when it's all done and they have their foot, I guarantee you that ISTP is very happy that they're not going to be even worse of a burden on their family than they were previously. I guarantee you. So, all you have to do is treat them with respect. Give them choices. Just lead them along that path until they choose willfully to go to the hospital and have their foot saved. Just don't give up. Outlast them. That's all you have to do. And then if all else fails, guilt them. 
and do a combination of guilting and a combination of choicing, basically, for the Xanatos Gambit, and you will win. If you want to know what a Xanatos Gambit is, it is X-A-N-A-T-O-S Gambit. Look it up. I'm not talking out of my neck here. Like, look up a Xanatos Gambit. That's the best way to defeat introverted intuition, and that's how you defeat N.I. Child, the Xanatos Gambit. Lead that horse to water, and then guilt them, guilt that horse so that horse actually takes a drink, right? That is how you social engineer an ISTP. If you found this lecture useful, helpful, educational, enlightening, please subscribe to the channel and also leave a like and a comment while you're at it. Also hit like the alarm bell so you can like get more alarms as to when these lectures are coming out. Uh, you can also like check out our meetup group and check and go to our meetup group. If you want to get your questions in or on our Q and A's and whatnot, go to our discord, uh, at which you can get the link in one of the links below, like go to like our social page, get on discord. You're good to go. You're on. And it's like awesome. If you'd like to support the channel, like on Patreon and gain access to private lectures and private content and premium content, etc., You can, uh, the link is also below in the description of this video. Take care of your ISTP guys. Uh, your ISTP is too stubborn for their own good. And if you're willing to manipulate them and social engineer them, guess what? You might just save their life. So remember, they're too stubborn and too prideful in most cases uh, for their own good. It's because, remember, from their point of view, they're the helper, not the helpee. From their point of view, they're the one to be listened to, not the one who is listening, right? And there's a reason for that. If you just apply these techniques to the ISTP, you will get anything that you ever need or want out of them. Because from this point of view, it's like they feel respected. It's like they've just been respected into going into the hospital and saving their foot, even though they didn't want to do that because they're perceiving it as something that's going to inhibit their freedom. So anyway, folks, I think that was a pretty good lecture for tonight. Um, I will uh, think I'm going to do another one tomorrow. So I'll see you folks tomorrow. Uh, otherwise, have a good night.